Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Paranormal Highway. Today, we're going to be talking about stories of paranormal that, well, let me just say this. It's an article that I ran into. Seven famous ghost stories that turn out to be total BS. Well, you know what? We're going to look at the look at the website. We're going to check out these stories. And at the end, we'll decide on what we think personally if these stories are BS or maybe the article wants the story to be BS. Don't want people to believe in ghosts. You know what I mean? You, you never know in this world. So kick back, relax. I'll play you the intro. So go get some coffee. Put in a simple vote right now. Simple vote. Do you believe in ghosts? Yes or no? Easy, right? Easy. So beyond that, go get some popcorn, get some coffee, because we are ready to take a ride on the paranormal highway. In 1974, a shocking murder case took place in Amityville, New York. The DeFeo family, consisting of Ronald, Louise, and their five children, were discovered murdered in their home, which later became known as the Amityville Horror House. The victims were found shot to death in their beds, with the exception of the eldest son, Butch DeFeo, who was the only survivor. Initially, Butch DeFeo claimed that a hitman had killed his family, but inconsistencies in his story led investigators to suspect him. Within days, DeFeo confessed to the murders, stating that he had heard voices urging him to commit the act. He was found guilty of six counts of second-degree murder in 1975 and sentenced to six consecutive life sentences. The case was unusual for several reasons. Firstly, no one reported hearing gunshots despite the high-powered rifle used. Secondly, all the victims were found lying face down in their beds, indicating that they did not attempt to escape or defend themselves. Finally, the murder weapon was discovered in a storm drain near the DeFeo home without any fingerprints on it. All right, guys. Now, welcome to the show. Today on the Paranormal Highway, I ran into an article that said these seven stories are BS. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, but the question is, we know there's a lot of skeptics out there. We know that, and if you're a skeptic who's in charge of a website, magazine, newspapers, whatever form of, of, of a way to get you content, they, they can write stories to make something sound BS when they're not, because all you have to do is plant that negative thought. And that person, and then that story's fake. Which a lot of these stories could be fake. But that's the beautiful thing about this all. They don't get to choose. The government don't get to choose. You don't get to choose. Isn't that wonderful? We get to choose on what story is real and what story is fake. And I see some wonderful people already in the chat. I see the famous Danny Stanton from South Carolina. Exploring Harley, one of the, not one of the, the number one paranormal investigator from Canada. I'll say it right here, right now. He is number one of Canada. Pretty soon, he's going to break America wide open. He's going to be the top of the top in America. But for right now, he is number one in Canada, and he is making waves. So I want to thank everybody here. BS stories, real stories, paranormal. What do we got to think? I mean, we know people fake things every day. Shoot, I learn how people fake things with certain tricks every single day. Every day. But you know what? But you know what? This is the article that I'm talking about. This is what the story, the show today is based out of. Seven famous ghost stories that turn out to be total BS. You know, because they say here, people love a good ghost story. For some, it's about the thrill of being scared. And others, it's about part of being a bigger belief system. That's true. I I, I can see that part. I can see that point, you know. I love horror movies because I want to be scared. I don't really get scared watching horror movies because I, I guess I'm demented, maybe. I don't know. Or people want to be part of the belief system. That's true. You know, whether it's based on a creepy town legend or someone's real life experience, these stories can be entertaining and fun as long as they're not happening to you. Isn't that great? <laughs> you know, that is so true, right? 
<laughs> that is so true. You know, oh, that they, they live in a haunted house. They're being threatened, getting scratches. Well, well, it sucks to be them. You know, as long as it's not happening to you, you don't care. You turn the, you turn, you turn the, you know, you turn around another way. Guys, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm trying to concentrate here. And see, literally, my dog is licking my leg. It's like, God damn it. Stop cleaning my leg. Stop cleaning my leg. So again, guys, for, for the record, any of these stories that come in, even though the article says they're BS, are they BS? Remember, that's up to you. But let's check out the first story. Three sisters made up the Hydesville hauntings. The Hydesville hauntings. I did find a video on these three sisters. So what I'm going to do is I I'm going to play the video on, you know, the theory of the Fox sisters. You know, what are they about? Just in case you never heard of this story. Because I get it. Some of these on here, I know one of them, everybody has heard. But I know some of these, you might have not heard. Let me see here. Uh-oh. I am lurking today because I came down with the common cold. Yeah, well, you're in the mountains, you know. Uh, mountains and it's cold up there right now. So, yeah. A lot of people are getting sick right now. All right, here we go with the uh, Fox Sisters. The Fox Sisters. On December 11, 1847, the Fox family moved to a modest house in the small village of Hydesville, New York, in the United States, where communication between the seen and the unseen began. The Fox family consisted of John and Margaret and their children, including the two daughters, Margareta and Catherine Fox, ages 14 and 12, respectively. During this time, raps were heard in a cottage and Mrs. Fox sought to explain away the noises, but they continued, became stronger, furniture was moved, the touch of a cold hand was felt, and additional phenomena took place. On the night of March 31, 1848, the phenomena began again. There were a series of very strong and continued sounds. Katie challenged the invisible power. Now, do just as I do. Count one, two, three, four, she said, and the reps came as asked immediately. Mrs. Fox decided to put the phenomena to a test. She asked the noise to wrap the different ages of her children. Instantly, she heard the correct ages of her children, including the age of Emily, who had passed on in infancy. Mrs. Fox then proceeded to ask questions. Is this a human being that answers my questions so correctly? There was no response. She then asked, Is it a spirit? If it is, make two wraps. The response was an immediate two wraps. So Margaret began a sort of interview. It was revealed that a man had been murdered in the house about five years before, on a Tuesday at midnight, and buried the next Next night, ten feet below the surface of the cellar, the spirit stated that he had been murdered for the sum of five hundred dollars through an alphabetic combination of the wraps. The Remember, five hundred bucks in eighteen forty-seven—that's a lot of money. Back then, that's a lot of money. You know, five hundred bucks—I'll take it. It's still some good amount of money here today. But five hundred bucks in eighteen forty-seven. I don't know exactly what that amount would be back then, but I'm sure it's a lot. The identity of the victim and his killer were found. The family calls the neighbors to witness the phenomena. So in a few days, the house began to be visited by an increasing number of curious people. At the time of the phenomena, the two girls, Margaret and Kate, were removed from their home since they suspected that the phenomena were linked to the presence of both. However, the noises followed the Fox sisters. At the same time, the same phenomena were already happening in the homes of other families. This led to a spiritualist wave, which passed from America to Europe, 
where the field was already prepared for its study, aligned with scientific development. The most common way of manifestation in Europe was the turning tables, phenomenon that caught the attention of philosophers being one of them, the intellectual Hippolyte Léon Denizard Rivel, future Alan Kardec. All right. So, so I already see that Exploring Harley says the Fox sisters did what we call uh, toe popping. Now, now, the article here will go up here. Let me see here. Maggie and Kate Fox were responsible for an elaborate spiritual hoax that began in their Highsville home in New York. According to Smithsonian Magazine, which, Bob, you're part of the Smithsonian, you know, you might know about this. The girls told a neighbor about hearing sounds in the house that responded to their words, indicating there may be a ghostly presence. Their mother sent them to a live, to, um, to live, to live with their older sister, Leah, in Rochester, and the story took off. Lee joined her sister on a tour displaying their medium capabilities to anyone who will listen, often holding sen uh, sentences, sharing messages from the spirits. A rift occurred between the sisters. A rift, oh no, not a rift occurred between sisters. No, that's sad right there. And Maggie eventually denounced their work, giving the live demonstration of how they had pulled off the stunt. Years later, a skeleton was found in the walls of their childhood home, leading some to wonder if there was any truth to the spirits. It was determined that the skeleton was really just an assortment of random bones, some which belonged to a chicken. Wow, belonged to a chicken? Wow. I mean, it must be some big chicken bones if they're thinking that it was a, a body bone, right? I mean, if if you're thinking you found a skeleton that's a body, can you fill in bones with chicken? A chicken's got to be tiny. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, all that. So apparently, these girls are frauds. They don't have medium powers. They like I think what Harley was saying. They did the knocking sounds, and of course they got in the fight and they found out they were liars. Well, unfortunately, people, unfortunately, that still happens today. You know, people put claims as their mediums. They have gifts. I mean, it's 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 the hardest thing to prove, and it's the hardest thing to. Well, I guess it's easier to deprove, but it's hard to prove if somebody truly have gifts, you know, because I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, I'm not a person that I consider that have gifts, you know, I, yes, I know I, I have stories where I've seen bodies. Or like 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 people walking into an elevator and disappearing. Uh, people sitting at a chair in a, in a hospital. Bob and I having that experience in, in Gettysburg. But I'm talking about people who just supposedly have mediums where they can contract the uh, contract the dead easily, talk to the spirits anytime they want. You know what I mean? You know, my stuff was more. It happened. But people, there's claims that people can do it anytime they want. Oh, you want to have a sales for 20 bucks? Okay, I'll bring in your sister. I'll bring in, your, I'll, I'll talk to your great uncle. You know, that's power. No matter what you say, that's kind of power. Now, how do you prove that? I, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, it's, it, it's, Especially when I'm sure if some people have an appointment to see a medium, they know you're coming. There's ways to find out about that person. 
behind the scenes easily now with the Googles, with the internet, you know, calling their friends or, or whatever. So there are easy ways for people to find out, you know, your story. And then, you know, you know, you, you, you know, say you're a woman, a guy, you know, you, you have a loved one that passed away. So you're kind of emotional anyway. So you go into one of these places and when you're kind of in that emotional state, you know, it's easy to make you believe what they're telling you is true because you're already in such a, a depressed, depressed kind of a state. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's, a, and it's sad that, that, People make money off playing with your emotions. Think about it. Think about that. Say you're talking to somebody's uh, family member who passed away, and they know you know, and, you know they're they're 100 phony. That's sad. I mean, you're messing with somebody's mind. I think. <sighs> I think you should be locked up. You should. I, I believe you should be locked up. Because you're really screwing somebody over. Especially in the worst state of mind that they're in. Because usually you're going into seeing a medium. Because, you know, somebody's passed away or something. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I guess you have different reasons. I mean, I guess, I guess if I was going to see a medium. I'm more doing it for science as a you know experiment experience. So, so you know, but most people are not are not going in there for experience. You know what I need to do one day, guys. You know what I need to do one day. In my town, there's a, a I, I guess a medium. You know, you can uh, get your fortune telling. You could you know pay money or whatever. I need to call that place and not give it my name and say, hey, I want to get a reading, but may I film it and, you know, and do it live with you guys. I think that'd be fun. I should try to do something like that, you know, make it live. You know, I might have to have my, my daughter or my son to come with me so he can hold a phone camera. It's right in the middle of town, so I know the internet's good. You know, go in there and let's see what they got. You know what I mean? Let's see what they got. I, but I'm sure the, the place that they're total 100% pure fraud, they're not going to want me to to do that. But some of them just want to make money. So they're probably like, sure, but you got to pay a little extra. I want to see one, Eric, and walked out after 10 minutes. Yeah, JoJo, I, I, I want to try to hook that up and, see, and, and call and find out if I can record my session live, live right on air, so all of you could see it. I think that would be fun. I just don't know. I mean, I guess, I mean, can I create something to have my phone, like, out? You know, but then will they know what I'm doing? I mean, I guess I could, you know, if they say no. Hmm. I have to work that out. I guess the first thing I will do is just call them. Say, hey, I want to do a session, but can I record it live? Or maybe not tell them technically that it's live. I'll tell them that I just want to record it. Can I record the session so I can have it for me? But technically it's live. Big. We got one right in town. Pretty good. I'm always curious too what different places charge. But you know what I do. Don't uh don't think any will allow a camera. That would be neat though. I know that, that that's that's my point, freaking geek. I don't know if they would. I could try to maybe let me see here. Like, like here's a pocket. I can't even open up the pocket. You know, there's the three thing. You know. But the thing is, if I do that, I think they would know, right, that I'm recording. They'll probably say, like, hide that. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like. But I mean, I guess I could find out, right? I mean, I guess I could find out. I mean, hey, what do they care? You know, make their dollars. It's not like, it's not like, I got ten thousand people people watching in the first place. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, I'll see what I could do. I think that'd be that'd be awesome. All right, let's go to the next story. Amityville wasn't a horrifying as you think. Okay, now we all know the Amityville horror story. I mean, I mean everybody knows knows that story. And the real one will not charge you anything. Uh we're not charging anything. They work with donations only. The real ones. Yeah, that's the point. That's the point. The real ones. Who's the real ones? You used to watch I gave you the one with the camera. You know what? That's true. That's a good point. He did. I still have that. I still have that watch. I still haven't learned exactly how and how, how to use it properly. But but yeah, that's a good point. Now. How many feel horror is tricky? Because you guys saw the intro. The, the people died. I mean, there's no there's no there's no getting around that. The foe killed or whatever they're called. I don't care. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. It just in case any of you did not uh watch my intro. In case you didn't watch the intro, I don't know why you didn't come here early enough to watch the intro, but if you didn't, this is what I'm talking about. In 1974, a shocking murder case took place in Amityville, New York. The DeFeo family, consisting of Ronald, Louise, and their five children, were discovered murdered in their home, which later became known as the Amityville Horror House. The victims were found shot to death in their beds, with the exception of the eldest son, Butch DeFeo, who was the only survivor. Initially, Butch DeFeo claimed that a hitman had killed his family, but inconsistencies in his story led investigators to suspect him. Within days, DeFeo confessed to the murders, stating that he had heard voices urging him to commit the act. He was found guilty of six counts of second-degree murder in 1975 and sentenced to six consecutive life sentences. The case was unusual for several reasons. Firstly, no one reported hearing gunshots despite... That, now, that part's weird. That part is weird just because I, I'm sure every sound a person hears, you're not going to jump the gun, <laughs> jump the gun. <laughs> but the amount of shooting he's done, that is weird that, that nobody else could hear it. That many, because, you know, five shots or maybe it was six shots. And nobody heard that. That part is strange strange the high-powered rifle used secondly all the victims were found lying face down in their beds indicating that they did not attempt to escape or defend themselves and that's weird too right i mean if, if i'm in a house you know somebody's using a gun i mean th that sound is, is is super loud how were they all still facing down you know, some store, some people believe that he that he had help. That is strange. I mean, unless he shot him up and he turned him over, and these cops they don't know how to do investigation. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I just I just don't know. I it just it's it's hard for me to that part of the story. It is hard for me to understand. You hear that? Wouldn't you go underneath your bed or hide? How do they, oh, or like, were they all on sleeping pills or something? Like I said, maybe maybe he technically drugged them to sleep, and and just the investigation in that town was horrible, horrible. Ah, oh, I mean, I don't know. Finally, the murder weapon was discovered in a storm drain near the DeFeo home, without any fingerprints on it. Okay. All right. The reason I played that is there was a horrible murder that happened in that town. 
I mean, in that town, in that house. So there's bad energy in that house. I mean, I mean, my God. Kids, parents. I mean, the, the house is splattered with bad energy. So, you know, Ed, Ed, Lorraine Warren, you know, the picture of the famous uh, ghost. Maybe let me find that famous picture. Hold on. Uh, famous, famous Amityville horror picture. Let me see if I can get you guys that. Let me find you guys that picture. Just in case. Oh, come on. Come on. I don't want the picture of the house. Give me that one famous picture, god damn it. Don't you hate that? I should have had it before this. Uh famous Emmanuel Emmanuel uh about little boy. Let me see. Why is it making a heart? Oh, there it is. Okay. I I found it. I found it. Let me show you the picture. Let me share screen. Give me a second. There's that picture. I believe that picture is real. Because listen, the house has bad energy. Kids died in that house. So that house is haunted on some level. On some level, that house is haunted. It's, think about the murders that have happened there. Now, because I am talking about it, I, I will. I, I do have a, a, a mini video on uh, Inside Edition News when they when they took the story as the scary hit movie the amityville horror but he knows it as something else home he lived there as a boy were you scared living there horror house or hoax inside edition takes him back to the real house in amityville <laughs> it is one of the scariest horror movies to hit the screens and now the remake of the amityville horror is getting big audiences at movie houses but is hollywood's treatment of what happened in that house in amityville i do gotta tell you guys the remake sucks i'm sorry sorry ryan reynolds Sorry, you, you you made a bad movie, and and uh, I think, you know, Canada almost did not want you back in their country. You saved yourself with Deadpool, because even the Green Ladder you were in that Green Ladder movie sucked, but his remake sucked. It doesn't even come close to the original. Sorry, Ryan Reynolds. Anywhere close to what really happened? In an exclusive interview, Diane McInerney talked with the first time the man who grew up there and found out what he says is hoax and what really is horror. It's supposed to be based on a true story, a claim that's helped put the Amityville horror at the top of the movie charts. But we spoke to someone who says Hollywood's treatment of the whole Amityville case is horrifying. I was absolutely disgusted. Well, first of all, no, no offense to him. Of course, the, the studios are going to spice it up. Of course. Listen, they're there to make money. I'm not, I'm not defending on, you know, the, the actual truth. But when people complain about Hollywood and stuff, listen. You listen, it's all about the money with them. It's all about the money with them. The director's gonna tell you whatever you're gonna hear. But at the end of the day, it's about, you know, selling selling good solid quarter pounder burgers to you. Not 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 these little mini hamburgers with no fucking baking on it, with no cheese on it. You want the quarter pounder. You want the cheese. You want the ketchup. You want it. Oh, you want the taste. Nobody wants a little single hamburger that has nothing on it. That's just a fact. If they made the movie exactly maybe the way he wanted it, I hate to say it, nobody probably would be talking about the story today or actually do research into the story.
disgusted with what I'm seeing. Christopher Quarantino is in a position to judge. As a boy, he fled this house with his mom and adoptive father, Kathy and George Lutz, starting the whole Amityville saga. We went back to the home with Christopher, and in an exclusive first ever interview, he blasted what he sees as the untruths in the movie. The only thing that they got right is that our family moved in that house and we left. This is the house in Amityville, Long Island that the horror movie is based on. As you can see, the infamous windows have been changed and the home has gone through several owners since George Lutz and his family fled from here almost 30 years ago. Christopher Quarantino is the little boy in both the new movie version and the 1979 original starring James Brolin and Margot Kidder. But he says both movies are far from accurate. This scene, for instance. That didn't happen. Again, that's Hollywood portraying the story. Or this one. Were there swarms of flies? There was definitely a lot of flies, not nothing again like what Holly was portraying it. Both movies tell the story of murders that happened in the house before the Lutzes moved. True, the executives they want to sell, not really the director. True, but the director works for the studio. So the director technically, yeah, I know the studio says I want this in it, I want that in it, but at the end of the day, it is the director who puts it in there. And and there are and get also remember some of these directors, uh uh there's all different ones. Some of these directors they wrote the movie. They're behind it. They they sold the idea to the studios to get it made. So it's a it's you know every every situation of making a movie is different. Sometimes director has more of the power because it was all from them or producers, executive producers that's from the studio hires a director to make the movie they want. So every story is different. I don't know too much about the original director of the original Amityville Horror. I never follow his career, so I don't know what kind of a director he is. So, but at the end of the day, it is about making making the money because listen, even a director, if the director doesn't make a movie nobody sees, who's gonna who's gonna want to hell hire that director? If you don't make me money, you ain't gonna get a job. So. Directors gonna, you know, they'll do things to spice things up too, because they want a job. Moved in. There was a crime, a, a murder in the house. That part of the story is true. A man slaughtered his family, claiming spirits in the house told him to do it. The movie details how chilling events occur for the house's new occupants, the Lutz family. And although Christopher claims most of what happens in this movie is fiction, he says one scene does bear some similarity to life in the Amityville house. He says he did see a shadowy presence. It looked as, you know, as large as a man and was heading towards me. Were you scared living there? At times, for sure, yes, very. Quarantino attributes much of the Amityville hype over the years to his adopted father. He claims Lutz exaggerated stories of the house being haunted to help write the book, which started the... Bingo! Bingo! Bingo, 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 bingo! Love that part. Like the kid said, he did see a shadow. Because something evil did happen in that house. The exaggeration. I always tell people, I understand every story. I hate to say it somewhat gets a little bit exaggerated somehow. It, it happens when it changes. But there's a point where you're going, you, you fall, you're going over the line of an exaggeration just to sell something. To create something that happened. The house is haunted. Hands down. Amityville Horror is haunted. But at the level of the stepfather? No. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I hate to say this. Even though that guy's an exaggerator. You gotta give that guy some balls. Big hoonas. I'm serious, man. I wish I was able to talk to that guy and play the ACDC song, Big Balls. I got big balls. You got big balls. 
we got the biggest balls of them all. Big balls. Because buy a house, leave it 28 days, you're not guaranteed to get a book deal. You're not guaranteed that. So, you know, you're not guaranteed that there's going to be a movie made. It's not like every every exaggeration story behind it came out with that with that with that outcome, a movie made. So, dude, it's got big balls to buy a house, put the money down, and go. Now, of course, in the long run, he got divorced. Life went to hell. So he got he he you know karma caught up to him. But, but be honest. Uh, be wary of channels that say it isn't about the money while they make their pay, uh, pay, uh, PayPal donations link pinned to the top of their chat. Oh, yeah. No, I, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. But, man, that, that... I mean, it's one thing nowadays to... Okay. People create fake videos all the time. We... I... We don't need to rehash that. We know that a lot of people make fake videos. But it's one thing to create a fake video. Trying to get guaranteed money and clicks and views. But to actually buy a house and take off 20 days and hopefully to get a book. Remember, this is this is in the 70s. There, there was no internet. You know, you just have books, movies, and newspapers. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But Ron, I, I I get exactly what you're saying. I know what you're saying because there there are channels that always mention keep mentioning that through the show that you know you know donations and out. It's tricky because I I always felt. I want to earn somebody's donation. If somebody gave me a donation without me asking for it, it makes me feel great because you guys did something that I didn't ask for. So I got, I get exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I get exactly what you're talking about. But like I said, again, what a chance that guy took, man. I, so I'll give him credit on that. But we all know he exaggerated. He exaggerated. A uh, great show last night. Great show on the Cryptid Huntress channel. Long Island Bigfoot was there. They're talking about the dog man. They're talking about the dog man and stuff. That was a great, great, great conversations that they had. Um, if you didn't know, there was also another great show that, that was on yesterday, too. Uh, if you guys didn't know, here, let me share the screen real quick, and we'll get, we'll get back to the story. Um. Let me see here. Karen Halton TV had me as a guest on her channel with two other UFO uh, investigators, uh, researchers on her channel. Uh, if you guys have not watched it, uh, she. Let me put it in. A, let me put this link in there. If you guys have not watched that, uh, please check it out. Only thing is, is uh, Karen uses. Uh, Zoom, and and I had issues on trying to get into Zoom on the computer. I had issues. I I was actually able to get in, and there was no sound, no audio, and I checked every settings and all that. So I had to jump on my iPad to get onto Zoom. So and and so I didn't have like no no back green screen picture so i had to use whatever zoom is so there's a planet right there i don't know looks kind of cool i guess but but i really had a fun time i really truly had a fun time on this channel last night well we re actually not last night we recorded it during the day and she put it out at night so we pre-recorded it during the day and what i appreciated was when you go on channels with so-called UFO investigators, researchers. I, I'm not wary, but 
I'm always wary because Ron Coffin Neighbors, you remember when you're on my channel, I had that one guy come on and he was a huge, he was a huge Jeremy Corbell follower. You know what I mean? He was a huge Jeremy Corbell follower and all that. You know, and you're like, oh, okay. So he believes everything. Any article that comes out, these two guys were smart. They, 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 they study and, and they, they don't believe everything. And they feel bad for a lot of people in the UFO community that, that falls into this trap of thinking all because the media or the news calls this guy um, an automatically whistleblower. And that means it's an automatically a sell. It's an automatically great. These guys were smart. And I appreciated people being real like that. So it was a great show last night. It was fun being with people that actually had an open mind and knows that bakery is a major part. It's sad, but it's true. But let's get back to more stories. All right. Let's go back to um to the article to see what's the next one that's supposed to be famous. Here we go. And I'm not going to read none of this about Amityville Horror because we, we all know this story. The Anton Light ghost was debunked. The Anton Light ghost. And I found a video about the Anton Light because honestly, I never try to uh, uh, pretend to people that I know everything. I don't. I don't. I never heard of this story of the Anson Light ghost. Maybe I should have. I apologize, but I never heard the story. And that's why I love doing these shows like this because I am learning myself on some of these stories. Because to make it to an article, I don't know, it's got to be known, right? Got to be known. Oh, Ron, 100%. He was a very nice, polite guy. Very nice, polite. I would never ha ha say anything bad about him. But I was just taken a little back. <laughs> you were too, you know, about the Jeremy Corbell stuff and all that. Like, oh, and I love, Ron, when you say like, okay, hey, each person's their own, you know? You know, and then I agree with that. I agree with that, Ron, that you got the right to believe what you want to believe. But I just don't like I just don't like anybody following a gatekeeper like Jeremy Corbell. Like again, people don't know that that he's like an agent. When you sign when 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 uh people go to him with stories and he'll and if he wants to get you on TV shows and all that, they sign a contract with them. He gets 22% of whatever they make. So he's a salesman. Jimmy Corbell is a salesman. So I it just takes me back a little bit when somebody follows a salesman. You know, hey, what do I know? All right, let's check out this Anson Light. Phenomenon. In fact, they're now suing each other. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Here we go. In Texas, there is a small town called Anson. Its population today is only about 2,000. In this town, a woman once lived with her three sons. She was a woman and a mother like any other living in the 1800s. On a cold winter night, cozying up to their fireplace, the mother realized that the firewood was running low. So like on any other night, she sent her boys to retrieve more. Before leaving, the mother reminded them simply to flash their lanterns in a pattern of three should they get lost or into any trouble. This way, they could easily reunite. The boys nodded in understanding and were off into the night in the blink of an eye. Only, this night would turn out to be not like any other night. Uh -oh. The dutiful like boys night. obliged and went to retrieve the firewood. Only this time, 
they didn't come back. Of course, the mother was growing suspicious that her boys were taking longer than usual, so she sent out to find them. She scurried outside and looked around briskly. Shivering in the cold of the night, she saw a faint glimpse. There is nothing more horror and scary is when you can't when you can't find your kid. When you can't find your kid. Man, everything in your body drops. When I was living in Maryland at the time, we went to a mall or IKEA. I think the IKEA was on West Virginia borderline or, or Virginia. I can't remember. There was a line of, you know, Maryland's connected with so many states. I, I don't remember what state we went into IKEA. And we're buying our stuff. My middle son was just gone. Was just gone. And I remember, like, we could not see him. You know, and, and you know, we don't know these towns very well. You know, these population. And it was like, I mean, your whole body just feels gone. Like, empty. Like, like oh, my God. And what happened was, there was... A, you know, this warehouse, there's long poles in in this. By by the food court in the register, there's this long pool. And behind it, there was like a little steering wheel that we didn't know. He was on the steering wheel behind a pool. But when we looked, you didn't see no body. You didn't see no body. So, so man, that, that's a feeling that I, my heart goes out to any parent, any person. That, that when that when you don't see that person there, it's, it's horrible. Glimmer of light, and immediately her heart dropped. Frantically, she rushed to the source of the light, only to find that her sons had been murdered, with not a soul in sight. If for some reason you wanted to visit the place where this all happened, you could do so by following a long dirt road that travels along the local cemetery. When you reach the crossroads, you turn your car around and face back the direction which you came. But why would you want to do this? Rumor has it that the mother did live on, but not in the way that you might think. Her spirit is said to be lingering around in desperate search of her boys. And when you flash your headlights three times, she will return the favor. Hoping that one day she will be reunited with her three sons. Some people wow. have reported that the light seems to get closer and closer until it vanishes as if it were never there. Others have said that if you taunt it or disrespect it, it turns a bloody hue of red, but you can never get close enough to the light, otherwise it vanishes. Perhaps in a twist of fate as the mother was never able to reunite with her sons. All right, all right. So let's go back to the uh, article and see what's what's fake about it. Like I said, I, I don't know this story. In Anson, Texas, there was a mysterious light that appeared at a particular spot on a highway each night. The legend goes that her gr grieving mother disappeared and she was searching for her son who had also recently disappeared. The light from the lantern remained to this day, becoming known as the Anson Light. Okay, good, good, good. The story was no match for a group of college students and iPhones who figured out the lights were actually the headlights of cars coming from another nearby highway. Okay, so so basically, the, the, the reflection of the light they're seeing wasn't from that road. It was from a near highway. Oh, very good. Okay. Now, technically, it doesn't mean that every single light that somebody has seen is automatically from that highway. You know, I mean, possibility of an orb? Sure. And all that. But a grieving mother that lost her kids? I could very well see them looking for the kids in the afterlife. I can see that. Think about I mean, I can see it. I can see it. 
I mean, there, there's ghost stories all over the place of people searching for something in the afterlife. I mean, I don't know that personally because I'm not in the afterlife, but thank God, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, it'd be weird that if you guys are watching this right now and you're not really watching me, you're watching the ghost. Ooh. Like that song. I got big balls. You got big balls. We got the biggest balls. I'll probably get a, a copyright from ACDC for singing their song. Ah, it's probably I probably do it so horribly wrong. They probably wouldn't even care. Right. All right. Let's go on to the next story. Uh, Coventry University Goals has uh, a scientific explanation. Now, first of all, guys, let me tell you something. Uh, I could not find any video, any video about this, any good ones about this. So, honestly, honestly, I, I if, if anybody in the chat knows about anything about this ghost on this story please write something in in the chat because i couldn't find anything good i, I mean i saw i saw a, a a short haunted places like a, like on a on a short video one section like they went to this you know this place supposed to have a haunted ghost but not really a true a story behind it so there's no video for this uh, on the campus of the Cumberland University in England, there's a 14th century cellar home to a ghost, or so people thought. They who visited the cellar said they. Oh, actually, there was one video, but it was like over 20 minutes long, and I couldn't find anything good in the middle to cut out, so I just didn't bother. They had a paranormal experience with some reporting seeing the ghost of a woman. Even a self-proclaimed witch reportedly couldn't stay down there. For more than a few uh, a few moments, uh, I would think I don't know a woman ghost, a woman ghost. You know, hey, if you're a guy, you know Dan Aykroyd has said that he has had an experience with a ghost in 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 a sexually kind of way. Hell, Bobby Brown said on a news channel. I showed on this. Oh, I should have found it. Oh, where he said he had sex with the ghost. Do I still have that video of Bobby Brown saying he actually had sex with the ghost? Huh. Hold up. Let me let me just type it in under my my uh, archives. I know I have it in the archives. I just don't know exactly what it's titled. Let me see here. Oh, oh, oh! I think I found it. I think I found it. I think I found that Bobby Brown has said he actually had sex with the ghost. All right. I think I found it. It was meant to be. Bobby Brown says he has sex with the ghost. Let's see. I can't believe I'm going to ask you this, but I have to. What? You, you had sex with a ghost? A ghost, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Tell me about it. I moved into this house. I bought this mansion in Georgia. <laughs> so this was a really, really spooky place. But yes, one time... Um, I woke up and yeah, a ghost. I was being mounted by a ghost. I wonder if he was I on wasn't drugs. High. That was my next question. I wasn't high. <laughs> that was my next question. Wasn't Were you tripping? Were you tripping? No, I was no. not tripping. You've had quite a life. I've had some crazy situations. <laughs> hey. Dude, more power to you. You know, hold on a second. I got to do this. I have to do this. Give me a second. I have to do this. I'm going to start a poll. Would, would you... Hold on a second. Would you have sex with the ghost? Start a poll right now. All right, right now, the pull is up. If you had the opportunity, would you have sex with the ghost? And 
Think about this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is it considered is it considered cheating? If he had sex with a ghost? It's not a lie. Actually, hold on. Hold on. That sounds even worse. It sounds like you're going to a graveyard, but you guys get what I'm talking about. If you're at your house and a ghost somehow I don't know. Is that cheating? What if the ghost took advantage of you? Like, you know, Dracula looks in your eyes. Man, what kind of... <laughs> you know? So, basically, I guess basically you'd be having sex with energy, right? I mean, it's energy. I mean, that's got to be a powerful ghost, too, if you really think about it. You know, this is how I, I would have to answer that question. For the good of science. For the good of science. That would be one hell of a finding, right? To prove, first of all, the ghost is real. And you can actually have sex with a ghost? Man. Man. Can you imagine having a cat house? You own a cat house in Vegas. But you're using ghosts instead of people. You know, I would. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know, but I, it's kind of like sex dreams, not cheating. Yeah, you know, Sheena, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, she should be able to catch a disease, right? <laughs> I mean, it's energy. She'd be disease free, <laughs> cheap labor. <laughs> I'm sorry, we really we really got off the <laughs> we got off the rocker, but uh, I apologize. Uh, let me see here. Um, the story was debunked when Vic Tandy, a lit uh, a lit literature at the school, a part time ghost hunter, discovered th what was later called the fear frequency. By, me by me uh, measuring infrasounds levels, he determined that high frequencies can cause people to see optical illusions. Get chills. Really sure you've seen a ghost, even if you haven't. And it turns out the levels at the Comfort University cellar fall into a range where those effects are to be expected. Okay. They people say all the time that frequencies can do a lot of things. Finding the right frequency to find a Bigfoot, talk to Bigfoot, uh, find the right frequency to crack a window, to break something. I mean, frank frequency can do things. So, okay, you know, I, I guess. I don't know. I guess I can accept that. Okay. Well, let's move on. A photo of the Wim ghost is probably fake. Now, I did find a video of this Wim ghost. So, so I actually didn't really know this story either. Maybe I should have. And I again, I apologize for me, myself, not knowing this story. But well, we're going to find out if a lot of you haven't heard this story. Well, here we go. Be afraid. Be terrified. This photograph of the go. Okay, guys. First of all, hold on a second. I got to give you guys a disclaimer. All right. A lot of these videos for this story was actually copyrighted, believe it or not. This story wasn't, but the guy's voice wasn't the best in the world, which my voice is not the best in the world, too. So I I low-pitched it one. So I low-pitched this guy's voice just to make it sound a little better and a little way spookier, just so you guys know. 
This photograph of the ghost girl was taken as Wemtown Hall burned to the ground in Shropshire, UK in 1995. At the time, nobody saw this girl standing in the doorway of the burning building. Onlookers were stopped by police and firefighters from approaching the burning town hall. It was only after the fire that the photo was developed and the photographer discovered the ghostly image of the young girl. Experts analyzed both the photo and the negative and reported that they had not been altered or faked. Skeptics say that the image of the girl may just be a convenient trick of the light, with smoke, flame and shadows creating an optical illusion at the moment the photographer took his picture. Do you think that's possible? The image of the girl's face on the pictures has never been properly explained. Is this a real ghost caught on film? But if it is real, who could the ghost girl be? The town hall burned down once before, a long time ago. Yeah, it happened like in 1677, and history books say that the fire was started accidentally by a 14-year-old girl called Jane Cherm when she dropped the candle. Locals maintain that Jane Cherm was one of the people who died in that fire back in 1677 and has haunted the town hall ever since. Some think her ghost continues to haunt the building because of her guilt for starting the original fire that killed so many others. Well, first of all, Hold on, let's go back here. I mean, I mean, anything's possible, right? I mean, if you take a hundred pictures of something like like smoke rises, you know, it'll look like something. It's no different than like you look at in the clouds, right? Uh, for a second, that cloud looked like a face, or or, or a, a, a heaven, or a building. But then, of course. It, it shifts the, the clouds shift a little bit it looks different so so i mean it, that that does look like a a, a perfectly it looks like a girl perfectly so yeah there's there's camera blair i mean ron's the uh ron's the the camera guy ron knows that sometimes cameras in a certain angles or certain lighting with certain things you know, we'll capture something that, that looks like it's something that like like that picture, but turn out to be not real. So, so, but again, yeah. And then, um, uh, Explorer Harley said it's called Paradolia. Uh, Pepper's Ghost. But hey, you know, hey. What if it did capture a girl there? Fantastic. You know, it, fantastic. But but it's also... Here, uh, let me see if the article says anything that we haven't seen in that video. Let's go to this article for a second. Let's see. A fire erupted in the town. We know that. In 1955, a fire range that would become infamous later claimed to be Jane Trim was accidentally set fire to the town in 1667. Though O'Reilly uh, swore the photo wasn't doctored, and while a photographer expert agreed, another uh, Sir Fire resident may have proven otherwise. He found a 1922 postcard with a strikingly similar young girl in it, lending credits, uh, credence to the theory that O'Reilly did, in fact, tamper with this photo. Well, guys, nowadays, I mean, anything's possible. I mean, that's the problem, right? That's the problem. Any picture you see now, any video footage you see now, you're automatically going to, it was altered. It was this. I mean, it's almost like, I don't know. I mean, what's the answer? 
what's the answer to, to prove that a picture or video is right? I know you can look at the data, right? I know like, like if I took a picture, if I send the original card to Ron, you know, he can look at the data and see it wasn't altered. But you also have to trust that Ron's going to be honest with that finding too. Which, I mean, we all trust Ron. But you guys get what I'm saying. You could always find somebody who's going to say, oh my God, this was unaltered. This was unaltered. That's a problem too. It's the same problem that I, you know, I know some people who supposedly send DNA of the Bigfoot to certain places. You don't even know those certain places are going to tell you the truth. And that's the problem nowadays. It's, it's, Especially now when there's like, especially now there's so much money in everything. In everything. It clouds your mind. Now, this story here, uh, there's not really a video about it. The H family was suffering from carbon monoxide because there was a story in 1921. A woman known as uh, Miss H began seeing a doctor with some strange symptoms. After moving into the house, her family began feeling weak footsteps, headaches, even seeing, even seeing, uh, uh, Apparations. At one point, her husband even woke in the middle of the night, certain that someone was strangling him. Strangling him. Probably, he was probably having sex with a ghost, and he was just saying strangling. And most of the uh, would assume there would be haunted until they found out that a broken furnace was releasing carbon monoxide into the home. Frequency carbon monoxide. Yeah. 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 They're, they're, they're all possibilities. They're all possibilities. You know, I do have a fire. My fire uh, alarm is also a carbon monoxide alarm. So, you know, so I would think, I mean, I don't know what, uh, maybe Ron, maybe Ron can answer. I don't know exactly what level, to, how much carbon, uh, carbon monoxide you would need to start hallucinating without your carbon monoxide alarm catching it. I don't know that. I, I would think. The amount of carbon monoxide that that would be considered poisoning, where your mind is seeing things, that your alarm would actually catch that. If you have one of those fire carbon monoxide alarms in the state of Washington, you got to have one. You got to have you got to have one in your house. So, so let's skip that one. All right, this one is actually the last story of the day. The San Antonio legend. It didn't even happen in San Antonio. This is a famous story about a train and a full of children. And I did find a video for that, for the children. So let's hear the story. Oh, hold on. What is Lockyer like saying? Cosmic Nate, are you talking about the alien girl who was also a son? That was in Andromeda, not Star Trek. Although both were created by Gene Roddenberry. Oh, nerd talk, nerd talk. I love it. I love it. Let's check out this video. The lore, ghost children guard the intersection of Villa Main and Shane Road in South San Antonio, Texas. I'm Paul on behalf of Graveyard Shift, and this is the mysterious story of the San Antonio ghost children. This legend began around the 1940s when a bus full of children stalled in the middle of a railroad crossing, colliding with the speeding train. All told, 10 children lost their lives, but according to locals, their spirits still haunt the area. Any vehicle stopped near the intersection will inexplicably be pushed across the tracks to safety, according to legend. It's also believed that children's spirits are preventing innocent people from sharing. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, Danny, oh my God, that's the comment that gets on. Danny, I'm not looking at everything in the chat. I'm only looking once in a while, so I, I'm, not, I'm not able to catch everybody's comments. So I apologize if I miss some good comments, but I... I I don't want to. I I don't want to stare at the comment board for every single comment. So I'm just catching things with my eye. So I apologize if I'm not seeing some great comments. I apologize for that. But I'm not gonna stare at the comments. I, I, you know, I'm doing the show. 
carrying their gruesome fate. One account from Brenda Pacheco claims she put her car in neutral, took her foot off the pedals, and the car actually moved. Now, this has been tested countless times. Locals say police have to patrol the area in order to keep traffic moving. Now, an explanation of all this could be the tracks sit on a downward incline, allowing the vehicles to move with gravity. But what it doesn't explain are the small handprints that are appearing on the back of cars, along with many reports that have said they have seen apparitions in photos. They've also heard the sound of children's laughter and the screeching wheels at the site. I'm Paul on behalf of Graveyard Shift, and these are the mysterious stories of the San Antonio Ghost Children. All right. Ghost Children. Well, what, is, what does this story here mean? Because it here it says the San Antonio legend didn't even happen in San Antonio. Okay, let's find out. A San Antonio legend that has a 1938 uh, a full a bus full of children stalled on train tracks and was soon hit by a train, killing the children inside. Since it's been reported that the park and the ghost tracks put in the car in neutral, the ghost of the kids will show up to push your car to safety. Didn't Ghost Adventures did something there when they had Nick on the team, like in the, in the first three seasons? I could have sworn I thought the Ghost Adventures were there. If they did, put it in the chat, please. To prove any skeptics wrong, some even put baby powder on the cars and used fingerprints as proof the kids were there. Unfortunately, for those who want the story to be true, there's a pretty logical explanation. All right, what is it? There's a slight incline on the tracks will make your car roll, and the fingerprints that appear are most likely your own. Really? Really? I, I, I get the incline. I get that. I get that. But automatically, all fingerprints? I, 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 and guys, I don't even know how much amount of fingerprints that have been found. Uh, there's a link that Danny put in. Hey, uh, Locke, this is where I bust other people's... Oh. Um, every, every, if, listen, if you put powder and you get some fingerprints, that's pretty cool. I know people in uh, haunted houses to put powder on the ground to see if they get footsteps. There's an opportunity that somebody accidentally step in the footprints, of course. But you can't say every every footprint was from somebody, or you can't say it was actually somebody's hand. Listen, I got pretty big hands. It's not a kid's hand. I think I should be able to. Um, I should be able to to re re recognize a kid's hand compared to mine. I, I hate when, when a ghost wants a dollar to clean my windshield. <laughs> That's a good one. Now, listen, guys. Again, I, I get it. It is, it, is, it is hard to determine what's real and what's not. There's so many tricks that people are doing nowadays that just, you know, here, here's, here's the trick that I've learned that, that a lot of people are doing too now. You guys all know what the uh, you could buy the uh, uh, Ron. What's it called? The infant red. You could buy it for an iPhone or even even um, God, the Samsung phones. Whatever that. I, I'm having a brain freeze. You know where do you see infant red? You, you see the heat. The heat. I don't know the exact name of it that you could you could buy on phones now. Um, uh, so Ron, if you could tell us, I know, I know exactly, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe I'll type it in infant red, infant, infant red scanners or phones. Let me see here. I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up later. In fair, uh, uh, I missed your question. Uh, Ron, uh, uh, when you're when you're filming and you're using instant heat, you want to look at people's the heat. 
there, what, what is that? But you can buy it for your iPhone. You connect it, and th the thermal camera. There was there's a name for it for the ones. I, the thermal camera attachment. There's a certain one that everybody's buying for iPhones and the other ones. Uh, I got a cheap uh, thermal camera attachment for my camera. It's called the Seek thermal camera. The Seek. I thought there was also another one. There's another one that a lot of people are getting. Thermal camera. Um, I can show. Let me see. Thermal. Thermal camera or iPhone. I thought there was a, a one brand. Oh, Flare, Flare One. Flare One. Exactly. Flare. That's the one. That's the one. And there's a lot of trickery you could do with those. Like, like this is the most simple trick. Like, like, like. So you have a window. Somebody walks through it. And you, you get the image of, of a person. You get a heat thing. And you say it's a ghost. A lot of people. What they're what they do to make their uh, heat really shine through the window for one of those phone to capture, they would sit in another room to plug in warm blanket. They put the blanket around their body to raise your temperature. To raise your temperature. So when you really walk through that window. Your, your body temperature is at a higher level because you just had a warm blanket, one of those plug-in power blankets. And here's another, uh, another way. You know how you look at a wall? You can see a face, face heat, I don't know, a hand, a hand, a leg. Or something, you know, people who do to really make it shine, try to make it where it doesn't look like it's from a human hand warmers. Yep, you take a hand warmer, you have it in your jacket, you put your hand on a hand warmer, and when you put your hand on a wall and you look at that hand through a camera, it's gonna shine. Extra, extra red. And then, then with the trick what people try to do is they'll say, hey, dude, put your face next to that. Put your face, your leg, your Peter, I don't know, some parts of your body next to it. It doesn't look the same because the first original one they caught, they were using a hand warmer. So there's so many tricks out there. You got to be careful. People with warm blankets, plug-in blankets, and they walk by a window. I mean, there's so many things that 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 you don't even you don't even need to. Uh, you don't even need a, a a hand warmer. Just putting your hand on a wall, especially when it's cold, will bright right. True, true, true. But 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 if you're gonna have somebody else put one against it to compare it. If you do have that hand warmer, I'm just saying is it's going to raise the temperature even more. So like this, for example, if I had a hand, I, I wish, oh man, I wish I had a hand warmer and that kind of a system here to show you. Like if I had a hand warmer on this hand, not on this hand, and it's like you're saying, like Ron, like it's cold, I put both hands. This one is going to be brighter. Because you had a hand warmer, you raise the temperature. Where this hand's going to show something, but it's but it's not. But what I'm trying to get is 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 a person will do that after they had a hand warmer, and then put another hand next to it and say, "Look, see, see that one's brighter. That one has to be a ghost. It can't be that one." You, that, that's what I'm getting. You don't have to have a hand warmer, but but you but you use a hand warmer, and and and, and also, also. Okay, so so if I just put my hand up, I'm just using this as an example. No hand warmer, nothing. I don't know if you time it to when it fades away. I don't know. Let's just say it 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 fully fades away at I don't know, sixty eight seconds. 
Would you use a hand warmer? Raise the temperature of your hand. It's going to probably fade away an extra 30 seconds on top of that 68 seconds. It's going to stay longer because there was more heat on that versus the other one. I'm just saying, I'm just, what I'm just saying is, 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 is there's simple things that you could do so fast that, that not even anybody catches. Cause you know, if Bob and I were walking and I have a hand warmer in my hand and I put my hand on the wall and Bob puts his, nobody's going to, Unless you see it, you don't know that it's there. My I, the reason I came up, uh, I, I was even thinking about that because my daughter, when it gets cold, we buy a box of hand warmers, and she always has one in her jacket. I remember, like, when I pick it up her jacket, I pull out a hand warmer, and I started thinking, man, that would raise the heat. So, uh oh. Uh oh, my hand. I I know I will put up a can of worms on this. My hand warmer is a Swiss Miss hat chocolate with two shots of a hundred proof of vodka in it, and I'm afraid to. I haven't read. It. I see my brother is right beneath Danny. I can imagine what he's gonna put. <laughs> oh, let's see what he put. I put my hand down my pan. I call it. I call it my hand warmer. <laughs> oh God! I should have known. I open up that one. I open up that can of worms. <laughs> Who needs a hand warmer? You got some. Oh God! I I, <laughs> I open up that can of worms. All right, guys. Um, again. I appreciate, I, I truly do. Uh, I know I always say this, but I I truly do appreciate um, every single one of you for being here. I really do truly appreciate it. It's, 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 it's amazing that just having one person that's not yourself watching is just, it's amazing. It's amazing that you guys take your time out of the day to watch it live. And I know there's people who work during the day, so they watch it at night. For anybody who takes time out to watch when there's millions of other channels, uh, shows, you could be doing anything. It's really appreciation. And again, I'm not here to say those stories are fake or real. I believe the Amityville Horror Story is real. I just believe... The movie, it was just, that's an exaggeration of the ghost haunting that happened there. And then, of course, I, uh, I they said the house got a cleaning, which makes sense why nobody else seen a ghost. Or the other houses or other people who live there, they might have minor things, but they're not going to come out and want to say it because they want people to leave their, their sidewalks for good beyond that. Uh, the ending of the show is, is a little video that I've been putting in the intros and the ending is about the little red room of the Amityville horror. So the ending of the show, there is the, there is a clip in that newspaper that I've been doing on the shows lately is about the red room of Amityville horror. So, you know, maybe stick around and, and watch that. And please, the best way guys, if you really want to uh, support me, I'm not going to ask you to give me money. Sh tell other people about the channel, share it out. To share it out. Tell people we all have a good time. That's the best way to support a channel is tell other people, hey, we just have a good time. Uh, no wrong opinion is wrong. Everybody has rights to their opinions, and we, and we respect that. We respect everybody's opinions here. So the best way to support a channel is tell other people about it, share it. If that's you know on social media, however it is, say, hey, watch these. These, these guys are really fun. Tomorrow's show, Dr. Wu is going to be back. And I've been getting some emails that people are intrigued about the Devil's Hands folklore story that's in Normandy Park that I live next to. And I'll I'll go more into that story tomorrow. I'll get Bob up here, and uh, we'll go more into the Devil's Hand. You know what is the Devil's Hand? It's a local folk story that supposedly have a connection with the Mary Island and a connection to Hell Portal. Like I said, they're just folklore, mythology. They're not 
you know, none of it's proven to be real. And and according to some people you, you even talk to, they say the Green River Killer, uh, the other famous Washington serial killer, um, Bundy, because this is all in King County that they've all been, they all been where the devil's hand is, and that's what caused a possession to them to do what they do. They're just stories, guys. We're just stories. All right. They're, they're, and, and I know I did a short on it and all that. And some people are actually intrigued. They go, Eric, can you talk more about it? I'm actually intrigued about the devil's hand. So so we're going to do that tomorrow. And um, it'll be a fun time. It'll be a fun time. We'll talk about the devil's hand. And then we'll probably talk a little bit more uh, about the Gettysburg stuff. And we'll just have a fun time tomorrow. So tell your friends. Tell everybody to come. I appreciate every single one of you. You guys are all fantastic. Beyond that, check out the ending. Uh, you'll see the Red Room at Amityville Horror. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. On the My name is Patty Camarado. I was friends with Allison Maceo, the girl who was murdered with the rest of her family here in 1974. This I'm going to show you is a mysterious red room that's so noted for in the book. This door they say was never here, was here, is here, always will be here, I suppose. This is the red room. Nothing more than a storage area where Allison and her brothers and I used to keep toys. Just red, you know? There's never any feeling of spirit presence or ghosts or any sort of thing like that. It's just a play area. We used to keep toys. Nothing more than that.